But you can tell this is the start of something new. High School Musical. I'm excited. I'm happy. Y'all, now it's time for the meat and potatoes. And I was just like, oh! Hi you guys, my name is Quincy and I post chatty videos about life and popular culture every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Please consider subscribing and liking this video to let me know that you enjoy this content. We open this episode with a sneak peek of Anna talking about one of the incoming girls. She's entertaining men for money. Coming into this episode, I am immediately stoked for some real drama. I hate saying that, but that's why we watch the show for all this juicy mess. All that drama with Sarah and all the ladies going against her was just the tip of the iceberg. And speaking of Sarah, we start the actual episode with Matt just trying to come to understanding that Sarah is no longer there. And with all this time we are dedicating to her leaving, just tells me that she is probably on her way back in a few episodes. Because in the past, if someone's on their way out, we maybe give them one, two minutes tops. It seemed like she got 30 minutes alone of just her going through it, deciding to leave, did not deciding to leave, and then actually leaving. It was just a lot. And I just feel like there's no reason why someone going home this early would get this much time if they were actually going to stay away. She's coming back. That I'm just going to predict that happening because this is just a lot of time for this woman. No surprise here, but the girls are going in on Sarah leaving. You would think they'd just be happy that she's gone, one less girl to compete with. No, they're saying good riddance, you couldn't handle this, X, Y, Z. Then Victoria says the trash took itself out. And then Katie, our communication queen, our real queen of this whole season so far, is speaking up on behalf of Sarah while she's no longer there. I love, I support, I see understand people, especially women who are not afraid to speak up. People are being mean, nasty, ugly, and that is happening a lot on this episode in this season. Victoria says back ever so calmly, no Katie, I will not stop. I will do whatever the F I want to. I just feel like I'm back in middle school watching the Bad Girls Club. This is a lot and we're only maybe five minutes into the episode. Now it is time for the group date. We didn't have time to see last episode because we were watching Sarah go through it. And you can just feel the tension of the ghosts of Sarah's past just sprinkling all of its just negative energy on this date. The absolute highlight of this group date was with Chelsea talking to Matt. She talks about black women and natural hair, her decision to big chop, all these things. My eyes got so big watching the scene because never in my life have I felt so seen and represented on the Bachelor franchise that has never happened. And he seemed really into it, so much so that she got the group date rose. I'm gonna be completely frank. When I saw Chelsea that first episode, I was so ecstatic because I've never seen someone that looks like her on this show, but I was also kind of nervous or kind of like, okay, this is awesome, but she's gonna go home soon because that tends to happen on the show sometimes. We'll have some diverse, eclectic group of people that don't make it very far, or they're just kind of people to color the scenery, but then they don't last. To even just get that group day rose made me feel good. And it felt genuine. It didn't seem like, oh, let's give a black girl a rose. Like it really seemed like a genuine moment between her and Matt, so. I'm excited. I'm happy. Um, even if that's the only moment I get this whole episode. <laughs> so then we get a scene where Victoria is talking to Katie, basically trying to force her into apologizing to her for something she should not apologize for. And I am surprised that Katie even got this much airtime. I love her, but when I saw the first episode with the vibrator and everything, I didn't see her going much further than that. So this is another surprise this episode. Sometimes when we see those kind of cringy moments in that first episode they do not last so maybe I'm just sounding like an old person watching so many seasons of this show but I'm excited Kitty is the perfect person that we need throughout this whole season to be the devil's advocate to be the person to stand up for those who are not in the position to stand up for themselves I stand her. I love her. Oh my gosh let's keep going. So of course the conversation between Katie and Victoria doesn't go well. 
But speaking of conversations, Matt is such a good listener. He just picks up these little details and then brings them back up like episodes later. One thing I'm a little nervous about with Matt is that he's very validating and affirming of a lot of the women on this season. And that's needed both for him and for the women. But I'm nervous he's going to maybe say too much or maybe end up telling five women he's in love with them and genuinely mean it. But it can start some mess. But look, they picked a great lead and they picked a great cast. So it only makes sense. But I'm just nervous for him. You know what I mean? Like he's not doing anything wrong, but it might get him into some sticky situations. Y'all, now it's time for the meat and potatoes. Chris Harrison interrupts Matt with Victoria. Thank God. He tells Matt, there are so many women that were trying to fight for your heart on this season that we're going to include five more women. And he looks terrified and I know he's just thinking to himself, I'm already overwhelmed with the women that I got to start with. I think we started with 30 something women. And so to basically revert back to where we started and we're on the fourth episode, that's just a lot to throw at somebody who's never been a part of this franchise. The limo pulls up and we start with a banger. Brittany, who is a 23 year old from Chicago. She's a model and she's coming in kind of awkward, a little stiff. You can tell that she's nervous and rightfully so because she decides to plant one on him. They begin to make out upon just meeting each other because she wants to make up for lost time. And all the women of course are watching and awing, probably sobbing, wiping all their makeup and their lashes. It's just so much all at once. And even when she's walking, walking up the steps. She's doing this weird like swaying thing, a lot of arm movement, a lot of hip movement. And I feel like she's having to force herself to be confident and brave in this very scary moment. She just met this man. She just made out with this man. She's on television. A whole group of women probably hate her. It's just a lot to throw at one individual. I'm just going to send her my love, my positive vibes because she's going to need it. Next we have Michelle. She is 27 years old. She's a teacher from Minnesota and she is visibly nervous and she just looks so adorable. I immediately decided she's my favorite of all all the new people and they just had this immediate spark between them. I don't know if y'all felt that. Let me know if y'all felt that like I felt that. I want to hug her so bad and just support her because she has no idea what she just signed up for and she's gonna need a lot of support in this moment. Y'all know I'm tired of saying Victoria's name but she is freaking out. She's calling the new women hoes. Victoria summons over Carolina, who was a former Miss Puerto Rico, then proceeds to take off her crown, put it on herself. All the women are going, oh, Victoria, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this right now? And then when she finally takes it off, because that is someone else's belonging, she doesn't give it back to Catalina. She puts it on the table. This woman is so petty, she's so mean, but she also makes great television. So I'm very torn and I wanna know what y'all think about this woman, please tell me. Another thing I need to know is who are y'all siding with? I am always the one for the underdog. So I am more rooting for the new girls than I am for the old girls. I understand what they're going through or I can see what they're going through because they won't stop mentioning it. But it's like, y'all understand, this is producers work here. They didn't decide, you know, I'ma come episode four. They have no control over this. So why are you mad at them? Be mad at the producers. Be mad at everyone else who actually has something to do with the fact they're coming in late because these women applied the same time you applied. They just got to be here with this cool little spin off thing they did kind of with Tasha's season as well. So just deal with it, puff and pout a little bit, but don't take it out on the girls. They're already going through enough as it is. Y'all are all going through the same thing. Y'all know that, right? Poor baby Matt is coming back in. He looks nervous. He is stuttering, just overwhelmed. And at the end of it, Victoria interrupts to say, can we finish our convo? And you could just tell he's not feeling hurt. I don't blame him, but you know. Producers gotta produce, right? We start getting little sprinkles of hints that Anna has a problem with Brittany. She knows of her very vaguely because they're both from Chicago, as if that's not a major city or anything, and says she's not here for Matt. 
mind you, she doesn't actually know Brittany. She just knows rumors, but we're going to get to that later. But fast forwarding through all the rose ceremony and the cocktail party, basically four out of the five new girls get a rose. And I can already tell that one of them is going to get a one-on-one -on -one because why wouldn't you take the opportunity to make the other girls even more mad, right? Speaking of OGs, we see Big Higgins, who is just a favorite amongst Bachelor Nation, and who is basically mini Chris Harrison. He's talking to Matt and Matt's letting him know all the stress he's under. He has planned their next group day. It is an obstacle course that involves paddling in a giant pumpkin and dressing up like a squirrel to find an acorn. It's a lot, but it is funny. If I was anybody in this race, I'd be Maggie. She doesn't get anywhere in this pumpkin. She is staying in the middle of the lake and she doesn't make it out. We never see her ever again. I'm just kidding. But she doesn't get far. But one of the OGs, Marie, actually wins the race. I don't actually know what she wins. I think she got a trophy that looked like some nuts. So congratulations. Fast forwarding, it is now time for all the women to have their moment with Matt on the group date. Um, Brittany ends up interrupting Anna's time and she's planned all these things she wants to mention to Matt. And this is apparently what sends her off to tell everyone in the group day that she's apparently an escort because she knows all the rich men in Chicago, whatever that means. Stuff's about to go down. Back at the Chateau, Michelle is standing up for herself and the newbies and all the other girls there are rolling their eyes. And then surprise, surprise, she gets the one-on-one -on -one date. Anna decides that the best time to address this rumor about Brittany being an escort is in front of all the other girls on the group date. One, I wish that she addressed this to her first before spreading it. And then also, if you're going to then address it to Brittany, don't do it in front of all the other girls. You are putting her in such a vulnerable, uncomfortable, inappropriate position here. And of course, it's edited. So we're not seeing every little part of the conversation, but it all is just not adding up to me. She doesn't have much evidence. She's just going off of these vague messages that she got maybe and I am just not here for it. The crappiest part about this and what really needs to be mentioned is regardless of what Brittany has done or hasn't done in her past, this is nothing to be addressing on national television without her consent, without even knowing if it's true. From now on, she is going to be associated with this rumor, whether or not it's even true. And that is just what really irks me about this entire thing because it's one thing to be dramatic and start some mess on a show, but when it goes out of that and it affects someone's life forever, uh, that's not something I would even want to play with, even remotely. This whole Mean Girl thing continues. Brittany is opening up about how this is really hard for her. She didn't expect to be, you know, welcomed in with open arms, but this is a whole nother thing. And then Victoria just scoffs and tells her then leave. And this is going way too far for me. Like this is going from little drama to full on bullying. On a much brighter and happier note, my favorite part of this episode was Matt and Michelle having their one on one. They get to go on a zip line, they do a scavenger hunt and they go on a hot air balloon. They have so much chemistry and I was giddy watching. They both went three kids and the whole time they're just touchy feely and it was it was just so cute. If y'all have not already noticed by now, I really like talking about the production, the behind the scene. The first thing is that we clearly see the producers must have given the girls back at the Chateau binoculars so they can snoop on the date, which is just very extra, but again, it's television. And then on this hot air balloon date, there are clips when we see a man that's helping them along, you know, doing whatever someone has to do in a hot air balloon, putting fire in the balloon, and I guess guiding it along. And then we see clips where he's not there. And then I kind of saw something lower down. So what I'm thinking is that he had to crouch down when they were having their intimate moments, having their first kiss and makeout session in the hot air balloon. And there's a man just crouched down inside this very tight space. I just find that hilarious, but also very awkward. Of course, this is reality TV. So that kind of thing is often required. Just pretending like someone's not there while you have these intimate moments. 
but it's still a lot. Just when I thought I couldn't root for Michelle more, during their dinner portion, she talks about some really serious things, especially one that I relate to personally as a teacher. She mentions the struggle of teaching during a pandemic, the impact it has on her students, especially students of color. Again, I relate to that so strongly. She even touches on George Floyd and how that affected her and her students, as well as talking about achievement gaps and all these really serious topics that that I was just dumbfounded that they covered all of this in one day alone. They got so deep in their values and what they're looking for in a relationship. I feel like they went from strangers to borderline engaged in this one day. Like their eye contact was so intense. The thing that just sent me over the top on this date, and I was already smiling the whole time, is when she mentioned a quote that meant a lot to her. He says that it's his favorite quote and says that it's by Maya Angelou. And I was just like, oh! Not only does he know it's a Maya Angelou quote, it's one of his favorites. She's blushing, I'm just so happy. And I'm not the only one here. He even says that it surpassed a lot of the conversations he's had with these women for three to four weeks now and that he's basically seen all he needs to see. And then the speech that he gave before he gave her the bros was just so beautiful. I teared up just a little bit, but you can tell this is the start of something new. High School Musical. We can only be so cute for so long on a show like this. They have a group date where they have to box and beat each other up. And I'm just so relieved that the new girls are not a part of this date because like they said, there would have been blood. These women are not playing around and there were some real hits there. So much so my jaw was wide open and Matt decides that he's going to end it early because he doesn't want anybody getting hurt. Of course, I support his decision to do that, but I also now really want to experience what a live boxing match is like because it just seemed very exhilarating, very exciting. One thing that I cannot neglect to mention is I love Matt's responses to these women when they open up about their struggles, being on the show, and all the drama that comes with it. He is so validating and he's constantly asking them things like, what can I do to help? And ah, uh, he is just such a keeper. Just imagining being in a relationship with somebody like that who is so effective at communicating just makes me so happy for whoever ends up with him. We end this episode on such a cliffhanger because Katie finally addresses all the bullying that's been going on to Matt. I'm excited to see what comes of this. Hopefully there is some sort of resolution, but of course we have to have some drama before that happens. That is it from this crazy, crazy episode. Thank you so much for watching this recap and review. You. Please help me by turning this monologue into dialogue by sharing your thoughts of Matt and all the different women of the show. I am so excited to see you Thursday with my next upload. Goodbye.